Assalamu alaikum. Hello, kids. How are you today? Are you ready for today's episode? Insha'Allah, I am going to tell you the story of Prophet Shamil alayhi salam today. Are you ready, children? Now listen carefully. Bismillah. The story of Prophet Shamil alayhi salam. After the death of Prophet Yusha alayhi salam and Prophet Husqil alayhi salam, the people of Israel were left with no leaders. They committed sins and frequently fought with each other. To teach them a lesson, Allah sent them tyrannous kings who ill-treated them and spilled their blood. These kings frequently went to war with their neighbors. The soldiers took the Ark of the Covenant with them whenever they went to war. They believed the Ark would bring them luck. But one time, when they went out for war, the Ark was captured from them. The soldiers ran from the battlefield, fearing their lives. When the king heard that they had lost the Ark, he died on the spot. The people remained like sheep without a shepherd, until Almighty Allah sent them a prophet named Shamil alayhi salam. The people asked the Prophet to appoint a king over them to lead them in a war against their enemies. Prophet Shamil alayhi salam, knowing their weakness, told them, I fear that when the time comes to fight, you may refuse. But the people assured him that they had suffered enough insults and were now ready to fight in the way of Allah, even if they lost their lives. The Prophet prayed to Allah for guidance. Allah revealed to him that he had chosen one Talut to be their king. The Prophet didn't know this person, so he asked God how would he recognize Talut. He was told that Talut would come to him by himself and they should then hand over the control of the kingdom to him. Talut was tall and sturdy, pious and very intelligent. He lived and worked with his father at their farm. One day, several of their donkeys were lost. Talut went searching for the donkeys, accompanied by one of his servants. They traveled for many days and were very tired. Talut was really tired and wanted to go back to his farm. He was worried that the other animals would die if they didn't return soon. It was then that the servant suggested that they were in the land of Prophet Shamil alayhi salam. He thought it would be a good idea to ask him about the lost donkeys. Talut too agreed with his servant, and they went searching for the Prophet's house. On their way, they asked directions from some maidens carrying water. They told them to go in the direction of the hills. When they finally reached the house of the Prophet, they were surprised to see a huge crowd gathered in front of the house. When the Prophet saw Talut, he instantly recognized him as the king Allah had chosen for his people. Talut greeted the Prophet respectfully and asked him about his missing donkeys. Don't worry, said the Prophet. Your donkeys are already on their way back to your farm. He then told Talut that Allah had chosen him as the king of the children of Israel. He then explained him his duties as king and told him that if he carried out Allah's commands, he would be victorious. Talut was quite surprised by this news. It was such a huge responsibility. He told the Prophet that he belonged to the tribe of Binyamin, the least famous tribes of Yaqub. And I know nothing of leadership, kingship, and I have no wealth. The Prophet told him 
that it was the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he should be king, that he should thank God for his favor. Taking Talut by the hand, the Prophet led him to the children of Israel. This is Talut, and he is to be your king. But the Israelites were hesitant. How can he be a king over us when we are better fitted than him for the kingdom? shouted one man. He is not even rich. He doesn't even have enough wealth, shouted another. And he is from the tribe of Binyamin, said another. Then the Prophet calmly replied, Verily, Allah has chosen him above you and has increased him abundantly in knowledge and stature, and Allah grants his kingdom to whom he wills. The Israelites shook their heads again. We need a sign to believe, said one man. The Prophet agreed and asked them to go to the city gates. It was a miracle. When the people arrived at the gates, they were surprised to find the lost chest of Prophet Musa salam. The people now believed in him and agreed to appoint him as their king. Talut then took charge as their king and immediately set out to meet the Philistine army who had camped near their land. He ordered that only men free from responsibilities should join the army. He asked those building homes, those who were about to be married, and those who were engaged in business not to join the army. He put them through vigorous training and gave them strict rules to follow. After a few days, he took his army out of the city to face the Philistines. Talut often put his men to frequent tests. On their way to the battlefield, they reached a river. The men were dying of thirst by now. You are allowed to drink water from the river, but only to quench your thirst, not more than that, he ordered them. But the soldiers were really tired, and many of them drank more than they needed. Talut was disappointed when he found this. He immediately discharged them for disobedience. He kept only those who had proven their sincerity. Like this, he put his army through several tests, and by the time they came face to face with the Philistine army, there were only about 30 soldiers left with him. It was then that the leader of the Philistine army showed himself. He was a giant man, towering above all other soldiers. When Talut's soldiers saw him, some of them ran away from the battlefield. Galut then challenged them for single combat. It was customary in those days for a soldier from each side to fight with each other instead of the whole army. None of Talut's men offered to volunteer. Talut was worried now. He even offered his daughter's hand in marriage, but no one still volunteered. It was then that a young boy walked up to him and offered his help. Talut was quite surprised when he saw the boy. He wondered, how could this little boy beat the giant? But the faith and conviction of the little boy convinced Talut to let him face the enemy. The little boy was none other than Prophet Dawood alayhi salam. The little boy had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on his side and he was able to defeat the giant Galut. Talut returned victorious and the predictions of Prophet Shamil alayhi salam had indeed come true. Did you like the video kids? Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification icon to stay updated on all our videos. And do share the video with your friends as well. Insha'Allah, I will tell you the story of Prophet Dawood in the next episode. That's all for today. Goodbye.